Okay, folks, we we should be live. Um, right, the first thing you might notice is it's a bit echoing here. Uh, I've had an absolute shocker with me in the connection in my new house. So um, what I've had to do, because I've moved out recently and there's been massive issues with the total broadband. And I went to, to get the live stream sorted and set up about an hour ago and the upload speeds just weren't fast enough to to get it on YouTube without a load of lagging. It was just like it was dropping like sixty percent of the frames, so it was just not going to work. So I tried everything I could, and then I was like, "Oh, I'm going live in a minute. I need to get this sorted out." Um, anyway, so I ran, I had to run down the street to my old house. So I'm back in the old house that we moved out of at the start of the month because I can, because we rented this one. I can be here till July the the first. And so I'm using the old neighbour's Wi-Fi through the wall. I touch wood, he doesn't notice that all his stuff started slowing down. Um, so I'm getting this live stream. So I'm sat with me Mac on a, on a camping table in an empty room, which is why it's echoing. But at least the connection is showing so far as good so we can do this lesson, which is great. Right. Um, so... That's why it's all a bit different. I feel a bit lost because um, I've been panicking and running around the place. I haven't got my hat. I haven't got my giraffe. I'm like, I'm lost. Do you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm, I have, however, got me running order, uh, scribbled down, so we should be able to get done what we need to get done because there's loads to do up in today's live stream about Half-Life. So today we're going to try and get our heads on Half-Life. Um, I'm going to start with a quick quiz as usual, but first I'm just going to go and see who is in, so if you want to put some on the live chat, if you can, I'll come and say hello now. Uh, right, brilliant. Happy days. Uh, great to see everyone is in. Good. Good to see Matthew in and, and, and uh, Kobe J. Brilliant, lads. Thank you for being um, the uh, moderators again. Melissa, great to see you. Hi, Hannah. Kira. Right, Taylor. Awesome. So we've got... Um, We've got you lot in, ready to learn some stuff about Half-Life. So what I'm going to do is I'll knock the live chat off uh, and then I will get with a quick quiz and I'll knock it back on to see what scores we've got. So um, let's have a look. Hello, hello. With the upside down smiley face. <laughs> Finian. Good, good, good. Mel. Right. So... Um, I'll disable that for a second. So that's disabled now. And I will put on the, um, the PowerPoint with a quick quiz. So hopefully, I'll just check because I've had a bit of a break. Yep, yeah, you're on the PowerPoint. Good. So am I, so let's go. Right, um, quick quiz. It's been a while, hasn't it? So um, we've had half term. I've been moving out, so I haven't had any broadband. There's been lots going on. Um, for me behind the scenes that I've been able to sort out, so I apologize it's not been a lesson for a while. They'll be on now every Thursday, two o'clock uh, each week from now till the end of, of term. All right. Oh, by the way, it's been lovely to see some of you in, the ones that have had appointments with, with me. It's been great to see you, touch base, make sure you're all right. Um, yeah, it's been, that's been really good uh, to see the people I've seen, so good stuff. Right, uh, let's see what we can remember. Don't worry if this is hazy because we, we're going back a few weeks now. All right, so question one. What is the central part of an atom called? So on that diagram, there's a central part that is got red and yellow little particles in. What's that called? Question one. Okay, question two. What two types of particles do you find in that central part? So those red and yellow particles in the middle what are they representing? They're representing two types of particles that you find in the middle of an atom. Okay. Uh, what are those two particles called? Question two. All right, so that's some fundamentals of the structure of an atom. Right, hopefully we can remember at least one of those. Uh, right, a bit tricky here. We did, there was a live lesson about an experiment um, someone did that discovered that central part of the atom. I'm purposefully calling it the central part because that's question one. See if you know the term for it. So for now, I'll call it that. So not give the answer away. <laughs> what was the name of the experiment that led to them discovering the central part of the atom? I'll give you a reminder. It, we used to think it 
the atom was like a plum pudding. It was like the plum pudding model of the atom. And then someone did an experiment. Can you remember what that was called? Because that's what found the central part of the atom. Shared the chemistry, that's in the end of it. Okay. Four, um, what is an isotope? Okay, we've done this back in lesson one, I think. Um, Tommy touched you an isotope. So can you remember what an isotope is? Okay. Uh, right, good. Of course I'm having a... Because I'm not trusting myself because of all the flap of getting the computer moved down the road and all the rest of it. I'm just going to check. Yeah, no, you are there. Well, the file, fine. I'm just checking the encoding software to make sure you're at where I think you're at, but you are. I need to, start, I need to relax a bit. Right. I need my giraffe. Or my hat. And that'll be fine. Um, Right, question five, about radioactivity. What part of an atom can be unstable, which leads it to give off radiation? Okay, so some atoms are unstable and they give off radiation, that's when we call them radioactive. What part of the atom gives off the radiation? What bit becomes unstable? Can you remember what it's all to do with? Okay, question six, what is an alpha particle? There was three types of radiation, alpha, beta, and gamma, that were given off by the atom if it was unstable. Can you remember what an alpha particle was? Question six. Question seven. What is ionization? Right? Alpha, beta, and gamma can ionize, I'll give you a little clue here, other atoms. Okay? What does it mean if they're ionizing an atom? What is ionization? All right. And finally, this is one to test your brain. Alpha, beta, and gamma, you can stop them using various materials. Some, you know, some of them are stopped really easy. Some of them you need different, more dense materials to stop, basically. What sort of material can you remember you, do you need to stop beta radiation if you wanted to, like, block beta radiation? Gamma would still get through, but what could you use to block beta? There are your eight questions. Okay. Right, good. So, let's go with the answers. All right. Um, this stuff, don't worry if the answer's jog your memory. That's fine. That's the whole process of trying to get it back in your short-term memory and retrieving it from hopefully your long-term memory or your long-term memory once it's been jogged to think about it to then put it back in your long-term memory is the process you keep doing that that's how you get stuff to stick in your long-term memory forever all right so we that's why we sort of repeat it okay uh let's get on the answers um so central part of the atom is called the nucleus brilliant uh that contains protons and neutrons those are the two particles particles in the nucleus and it was Rutherford's alpha scattering experiment that discovered that nucleus. Okay, so he, if we remember, he had a thin sheet of gold foil, really thin, a couple of atoms thick. Okay, and he fired alpha particles at them, at the gold foil, and he watched where the alpha particles went. And if it was a plum pudding, so it didn't have a nucleus, just like positive charge with electrons dotted in it, all them alpha particles would have just gone straight through, okay? But what he found is that every now and again, some rebounded back because they were hitting the nucleus and, and coming back the way they'd gone, and, and that wouldn't have happened if it was like a plum pudding. So that's that's basically how Rutherford found the nucleus, all right? We've got a nice tub. It's an atom. It's got the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. So it's a different version of an element, so let's say carbon-12, carbon-13, carbon-14. They're all carbon. They've all got um, six protons. But carbon-12's got six neutrons, six out six 12. Carbon-13 has got seven neutrons, six out seven 13. Carbon-14, which is actually radioactive, it's a beta decay, um, has got eight neutrons, six out eight, 14. Okay, so an isotope is just a different version of the same element. It's got the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. If carbon had seven protons, it wouldn't be carbon anymore, it'd be nitrogen, okay? The number of protons is what tells you what the element is. Okay, right. 
What part of the atom can give off radiation? This is all to do with the nucleus. Okay, it's the nucleus that's unstable. Alpha, beta, and gamma come from the nucleus. Okay. An alpha is two protons and two neutrons. Good. An ionization is where you knock an electron off the outer shell of a different atom. So let's say an atom was radioactive and it had an unstable nucleus and it gave off an alpha particle. Those two protons and two neutrons could go to a different atom and they could bash an electron off the outer shell of that atom. Okay. Um, and that's ionization and, and that, that can lead to certain cancers, etc., etc., or increasing the risk of certain cancers. So it's not a good thing, ionization, if it's atoms in certain um, molecules in the DNA of our cells. Okay, so important, you know, that ionization is knocking electrons off atoms. Right, um, what do we need to stop beta? Aluminium, there we go. Sort your scores out of eight. I'll turn the live chat on, you can put them on the live chat, okay? Um, hopefully you can remember some of them. So we need to go, yeah? I'll have to talk out loud to keep you going in terms of where I need to be. Turn this on. Right. Scores on the doors, folk. How have we got on? Put your scores on there now, out of eight. And also, any questions about the stuff that we've just done, um, you can put on there now as well. All right? So far, I've, we've not dropped any frames, so my old neighbour's Wi-Fi that I'm steaming through his wall <laughs> is doing a good job. Right, Taylor, don't worry, mate. That's because it's a while ago, isn't it? Well done for the two you've got. But hopefully that recap will just, you know, if you did that again, right? I tell you what, wait an hour, Taylor. Let go do something else. Come back, just do the quick, play the quick uh, quiz again. Um, which is brilliant. All right? Um, well done, Sky. Um, no worries about getting the five spot on. Finian, well done. Good. Um Right, that's not just Taylor. If if anything, um, it's a really good way. Just doing the quick quizzes of these live lessons off the playlist further down the line is a brilliant way of just recapping the key knowledge. So um, I bet you, Taylor, if you did it again in an hour, you'd get four out of eight. And if you did it in another hour, you might get six out of eight. And it'd be a brilliant way of getting it sorted. Okay. Um, Good, right, so people are doing well. Let's crack on then. Um, so what I'll do is I will um, knock this off. Okay, so I've knocked that chat off because we need to concentrate on understanding what Half-Life is. When you're doing a task, I'll put it on again so you can ask many questions. Um, so you should be looking. PowerPoint, which you are. So my, right, what we're doing today. Um, it's 14 minutes past, we've got loads to do. There is a practical as well. And what I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, the pra I'm gonna demo the practical last. Because the practical will probably take you about 20 minutes to do. So if I just go through the start of it, so you know what you're doing, I can finish the stream and then you can finish the, the practical off and you can email me your results and stuff at a later date. So we'll, we'll do the learning first. So we'll talk now about explaining what Half-Life is. We'll do some Half-Life calculations. So we'll do the first two objectives and then we'll look at modeling radioactive decay at the end of the live stream um, towards three o'clock and you can get it finished in your own time. I won't sit here doing 20 minutes of boringness like to watch, like throwing me dice 50 times, you, you know. I can do. I can show you how to do it, and then you can run it in your own time. So, half life. What is it? Well, we're going to use a bit of a simulation to explain it. So, hopefully now, um, if I cut to the browser, 
start with what do you? You should be able to see the simulation that I'm looking at. Right now, it's important to understand what's going on here to understand what Half-Life is. So remember, some atoms are unstable. These red dots on the screen, there are 400 of them, yeah, that you're looking at there, they represent atoms in a sample that are unstable. So this is a radioactive um, lump material. Now, normally there'd be millions and millions of unstable atoms, but we're modeling it with 400. So these red dots are 400 unstable atoms. And at some point, they are going to decay. They're going to give off alpha, beta, or gamma from their nucleus to get stable. Right, so these bad boys, these red ones are unstable. And in a minute, you're going to see that they're going to turn blue when they give off alpha, beta, or gamma to become stable. Now, you know already that this is a random process. You can't, you can't look at, like, imagine looking at the, the top uh, left-hand corner, the red one in the top left-hand corner, right? We can't say when that one is going to decay because it's random. This is why I'm going to use the dice when you're modeling it, okay? Um, all we can do is we can watch and we can, we can count how many are decaying over time. So, if I um, set this up, we're going to start with a, uh, a larger half-life. I'll explain that in a minute. So, if I click step, this is going to step through one second at a time. Okay. So, if I click step, right, you will have noticed in that one second, okay, eight of those unstable nuclei have decayed and turned blue, okay? So there's now 392 left, starting with 400, eight decayed, we've got 392 unstable left, all right? If I step it through again, after another second, now we've got 384 that have decayed, so another eight have decayed, so 16 in total, we're down to 384. And so on. So if we run this through, and it's modeling 100 seconds, this pattern, okay? So as we keep going second by second, okay, these, we can't tell which ones are going to do it, but these red unstable nucleuses are giving off alpha, beta, and gamma to become stable and are, are turning blue, so we can tell what's happening, okay? Now, if we keep stepping this through, look, tw by 20 seconds, the 400 red ones are now down to 263 red ones. Okay, so if we do a bit of quick math, it's 237, isn't it? We've had 237 decades in 20 seconds. Now, if we keep going, 255 left, 244 left, okay? Keep stepping it through. Right, this is important, okay? This point here, there are now and it didn't stop exactly on 200, but now half of those 400 have decayed, haven't they? I know it says 197, but that's because it's random and it doesn't always work perfectly. It's a good simulation, this. But half of them have decayed, right? How long has it taken for half of them to decay? How many seconds has it taken? Right, I'm hoping you can see that it's taken 32 seconds for half of these to decay, right? So the half-life is 32 seconds of this sample because the half-life is how long it takes for half the unstable nucleuses, nuclei, to decay. And in this time, it took 32 seconds, okay? If we step it on, keep going, look. Let it catch up. I wonder if I can play it after I've stepped it. We'll soon find out. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so there's our graph showing in 100 seconds what percentage of this is, has decayed. So we're down, we're just under 20%. We're down, uh, uh, well, yeah, it's going to be just over 15%, isn't it? 52 left out of 400, okay, after 100 seconds. Right, let's. Reset it, 
change it to something with a bit of a shorter half-life. So we're going to do the medium one now. And I'm going to just play this one. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll step it through to start with. So, first one, already down by 14. Dropping faster because it's going to have a shorter half-life. Look, let's go. Let's see how long it takes. Seven seconds, eight seconds, down to 270, 10 seconds, 12, 14, 15, 16. It's only taken 16 seconds for the 400 nuclei to halve to 200. So the half-life of this one is 16 seconds. Okay? If we play it out, and they all slowly turn blue, jobs are good. So we've almost, all of them, all of the phone have decayed in that 100 seconds. So, Let's look at the last one. I'm just going to play this out. It's a small half life. Let's play this out. Now, super quick decay. Okay. Right, I didn't stop it halfway, did I? I didn't stop it when N got to 200. So how, how do we know how do we work out the half-life? Because the half-life is the time it takes for half the unstable nuclei to decay or the count rate to half. Same thing. It indicates the same thing. We can use the graph, right? If you look at the graph, it goes 100, 80, 60, 40, 20% down the side, doesn't it? And it goes seconds along the x-axis, 0 to 100 along the bottom. Okay, I'll do a bit more work on the iPad on this in a minute. To find it, you can go to 50%, you can go across, and you can drop down, and you can read the time. Okay, I think what I'll try and do, what I'll try and do now is I'm going to try and show you what I mean by that on my iPad. So just give us a minute, and then and then I've got some questions for you to answer. There's a couple of graphs for you to do on your show. Um, so let's see if I can do this. I'm just going to check my OBS. Very good. Um, there's an old hound. Oh, that's the wrong number. Okay. Don't get that. That's not what I want. Yeah, don't mind about the software. I don't want it now. Just don't ruin me blooming live stream. Okay. So you've seen. A graph that looks something like this, haven't you? Okay. And it started at 100%, and then it went down to 80% of them left, 60, 40, 20, 0. Okay. And the time went up in seconds, 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way up to 100. Okay. So that was the time in seconds, and this was the percentage of undecayed nuclei left. So it's dead easy with these graphs to work out half-life because you just need to know how long does it take to go from 100% down to 50%, which would be in here, wouldn't it? This would be 50% because that's half of them gone. So you can go up 50, you can go across, you can go down, and you can see here, for me, that would be around 22 seconds. So I can see that the half-life of this sample, looking at the graph, is 22 seconds. I'll just say that again. You go from whatever the top number when it starts, you half it, this is a percentage, you go from 100 down to 50, go across and go down, and that's the half-life. That tells you the half-life, the time in seconds, where that 50% corresponds to. Okay, so... Just look at it. Uh, here... We'll go and browse it quick. Here we can see that if you go drop, if you drop down to 50 and go across and down, it's going to be about close to 10 seconds, isn't it? Basically, so the half life is going to be of this sample around 10 seconds. Okay, we reset it. Oh, I can't reset it there because I'm in OBS, isn't it? Yeah. 
corner to the bat to steer in the program. We reset it and step it through, keep it on small, step it through, right? 10 seconds, it's down to 208. I bet you 11 seconds will be less than half. Yeah, of course we are. So it's roughly 10, 10.5 seconds, the half life for this sample, okay? Right, brilliant. So two things to remember. One, <coughs> half life, if you ask to define it, it's the time it takes, so it's a time you're looking for, could be seconds, could be minutes, could be hours, could be years, okay? But it's the time it takes for half of the unstable nuclei to decay or the activity rate of the sample to go down by a half, okay? So, time for you to do a task. So there's your definitions we've gone through, so they're there for you on the, on the, on the strain. Can you use these graphs to work out the half-life place? Sample A and sample B. And then um, I'll switch the uh, live chat on and so I can see your answers. So sample A and sample B, can you work out the half-life from those graphs, please? You do that now. Uh, then you've got them on your sheet. I'll leave them there, but I'll turn on the chat in the meantime. So you can see, you can tell me the half life. So I want you to tell me what the half life of sample A and sample B is. Once you've worked it out on your sheets or off the screen. I just about work it out, I still think. So use those graphs, do exactly what I did on my whiteboard on my tablet to show you. Like go down to half the value, go across, drop down to the x-axis, read off the time, post them on the live chat so I can check, check we've got this sorted. Uh, right, so I think that's, I'm just doing the wrong way. Okay, I know what my answers are. Any, any offers on the live chat? Any offers? No offer, no anything up as yet. I don't know if that's because there's a delay or, or what, but let's see. Anyone got any anyone want to write down? Anyone have a go what the half lives are from those graphs? Right, which one, Kira? Which sample? Great answer. Which sample? Sample A or sample B? Do we agree? Do we disagree? Yes. So is that is correct? Which sample look here? Because we've got two graphs. I'm pretty sure I know which one you made, but right, Miss Backhouse. Oh, this is a revolution. You do not know how long Miss Backhouse has been trying to get her live chat working for. Right? She's been like, I couldn't help her. I tried for like about half hour. Mr. Uh, I only know him as Ricky, I apologise for using his first name. The IT wizard at school um, has massively sorted that out. So, Miss thinks it's 10 and 60. Yes. Uh, well done, Kira. Anyone else other than Kira and Denise willing to have a go at what they think these... Um, yeah, cool. Just um, ban him, Kirby. He's blocking. That's cool. Um, right. Anyone else? Okay, 10 and 60. Miss Backhouse, 60 kids going for 60. Um, right, okay. Let's have a look. Uh, you've had time now, so let's go. Turn the chat off. And we'll go here. Right. Miss was right. Sample A was 10 seconds because she went from 100 down to 50 
So drop down the y-axis from 100 down to 50, go across to the line, drop a line down just like I did. If you, if you remember, um, just like I did on, on, on my board there, so you, you, you went down to 50%, then across and down and read the time. And if, and if you do that for both graphs, you go from 100 to 50 for the sample A, and then you go from 20,000 to 10,000 for sample B, and K was right, that took 60 seconds, and Mrs. Right, sample A took 10 seconds to go from 100 to 50. So that's how we work it out off the graph. But remember, um, half-life is a time. It's a time it takes for a sample to half. Okay, so now we're going to look at how you, sometimes you get given a graph and you've got to be at half it, go across, work out half-life. Okay, and sometimes that's seconds, sometimes it's days, sometimes it's minutes, hours, whatever. And that's important for what they use the samples for, you see. No point using something in a medical setting where you want to inject someone with something radioactive so you can see how it passes through the body, if it's then going to be in their body for millions of years and, 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 and kill them effectively. Uh, you want something with like a, a half-life of a few hours so you can take your image in and then it'll disappear pretty quick. So really important concept half-life in terms of uses and also managing risks and dangers. Right, we're going to try and do some calculations now, so when you don't get the graph, the other sort of question you get asked about half-life, and there's a really good technique called ladder, so you need to do, if you get a half-life question, you need to use something, a strategy, to work them out called ladders, because if you don't use a ladder, it can really mess with your head. So just use ladders, I'll show you now, then jobs are good. So we're going to do some calculation. I'm going to do a calculation now, and then you're going to try the three that are on the sheet. I had a bit of a mess up with the sheet because there was supposed to be another five questions on there. You know, it's blank, and some of it went wrong with the print and that. So I've got them on this PowerPoint, and I'll put them as extensions. But let's have a go together at one. I'll explain the ladder system, and then I'll give you a little bit of time to do the questions that are on your sheet. All right, so let's have a look. Um, Spill PowerPoint. Where are we time wise? Right, we're halfway through this live stream. We're doing all right because uh, we need to get on to the model and that's what we're getting there. So, calculation with half life. So, this is the sort of question you're going to get um, in your exam. Okay, about half life. And you are on the PowerPoint. Stop down yourself, Mr. Clark. So, a sample of sodium 24, so the isotope. Sodium-24 is an isotope of sodium. Yes. That's why it's sodium-24. It's got 24 protons and neutrons in it. Okay. Um, has an activity of 10,000 BQ, 10,000 becquerels. So it can give you now 10,000 alpha beta or gammas every second. And the question says, what will the activity be after 60 hours? So we've got this thing that's unstable and giving out 10,000 a second. How many seconds are going to be given out after 60 hours? Bit of a tricky question. Sodium 24 has a half life of 15 hours. All right, so there's the information. Really tricky these questions unless you use a ladder. So let's show you how to answer this question with a ladder, and then you can use ladders to answer the questions on your sheet. All right, so these are easy. These are these are hard marks that lots of students don't get, but you can get if you if you use this strategy. I'm, I'm, it's really important that we follow this plan. So, there's the question. Uh, I'm going to sort my hand out so you're not looking at the dog. 914. Okay. Interesting live stream, isn't it? It's me trying to clear. I've forgotten how to clear the bloody thing. Right, that's good. That'll do. Right now, so here's the whiteboard. Good. So when you are answering questions on half life, you draw a ladder. 
I've never seen a GCC question with more than five rungs. So we're going to do a five rung ladder. So what we're going to do, we're going to go dead straightforward ladder, right? Now, this is a rung, so that's rung one, rung two, rung three, rung four, rung five. So we use a ladder to answer questions on our flag. So our question says, uh, it has an activity of 10,000, right? So that's what we put on the top of our ladder. Okay, so if we go up our, our whiteboard, we have 10,000 on the top of our ladder. Okay, right, dead easy. Because half life's all about halving, we just, to go down a rung on our ladder, we just have to half the number. So what's half 10,000? 5,000. What's half 5,000? Let's go down to the next room. Half 5,000? 2,500. Okay, what's half 2,500? Come on, brain. 1,250. What's half 1,250? So you're halving it each time. Because this is about half life. So to get to the next room down, you just half the number. Okay, half 1,250 is going to be. 600 and what's half that? that? No, I just made that up. No, I think that's right. 625. Right, so um, that easy. So uh, uh, that that's our question. It's about half-life and we've got an activity and what's it going to be after 60 hours? So we've just set up our ladder, right? We've just set up our ladder with the, the, the 10,000. This is what we're told in the question. And we've just set up our five-rung ladder, half in it each time. So we're half in it and then we half it again, and then we half it again, and then we half it again to go down our ladder. Okay. And then the gap between the ladder just represents the half-life. So this gap here, Okay, is one half life, isn't it? Because that's the time it takes for it to half. So we're told here that it's 60 hours. No, we're not. What is it after 60 hours? Sodium 24 has a half life of 15 hours. So if it takes, if it halves every 15 hours, this is going to be 15 hours. Then from 5,000. 2005. That's another 15 hours because that's how long it takes to half each time. And then half it again, that's going to be another 15 hours. That's going to be another 15 hours. So here we are. These are our, these are our, no, this is where we're starting. This is half in each time and each of these drops down represents 15 hours because that's the half life. Okay. So what's it going to be after 60 hours? That's the question, right? What's it going to be after 60 hours? So, after 15 hours, it's going to be 5,000. After 30 hours, because this is now 30 hours to go down two runs, 15 hours each, it's going to be 2,500. After 45, so three lots of 15, after 45 hours, it's going to be down to 1,250. And after four lots of 15, so after 60 hours, yeah, four half lives. Four times fifteen hours. Each of those runs down is 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 fifteen hours. The sample is going to be giving off an activity of six hundred and twenty-five. So our answer to this question is six hundred and twenty-five becquerels, right? Because we've worked it out using a ladder. You try and do that without using a ladder. One percent of you will be able to do it. Right, because you'll have like a freakish maths brain. The rest of you, me included, need to use these ladders, otherwise you get your knickers in a right knot. Okay? That's the way to do it, I promise you. Alright, so I've done that question for you. What I want you to do now is try the questions on your sheet or that are now on your screen. Okay? Um, 
and I will turn the live chat on to look at to answer any questions about if you're struggling with this. Okay, and um, there are those are the questions that were supposed to be printed on your sheet. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to leave that there for a second for people to look at and maybe jot down the key bits, but you just draw your ladders. Each of these questions you should be drawing a ladder for. Am I on the PowerPoint? See, I've lost. lost track of my... Yeah, no, I am good. Come on, I'm down at rest. Sorry about that. Um, and then I'm going to put those extensions on. So I'm going to leave it on the extension page now um, because you should have the sheets that I emailed through. Uh, so you can see what's going on and I'm going to go to the, put the chat on so you can ask me questions about this task. It's 14.41, we're just going to spend five minutes on this um, for you to ask me questions if you're struggling and then obviously you can, you can revisit these after if you need to because I want to spend the last 15 minutes looking at modelling Half-Life. Okay, right, have we got those questions? I'll leave them up and I'll stick the live chat on. You still have zero frames dropped, which means Vogler's Wi-Fi is working perfectly. Little does he know that I am live streaming. And he, <laughs> I'm using a, a teacher at Ulverson Victoria High to live stream for Furnace Academy students using his Wi-Fi on the, on the sneak through a wall and all that. But never mind, we're getting there. Right. What did he say? Mr. Kitchen would know this. The show must go on. There you go. If there's all a massive crisis, just you've got to make it work somehow. Um, right, live chat's on. Questions, answers, anything. That'd be brilliant. Okay, have a go at them. And I shall, while I'm letting you crack on that, I will keep an eye on the, I've, I'm looking at the chat now, so you can ask anything on there, and I'm just going to prepare the demo of the modelling radio. Yeah, I could have done with that trying to have 1,250 missed back outs. <laughs> My mental math is all right-ish, but there we go. <laughs> uh, but yeah, brilliant, brilliant point. This is dead right. If you want to go down to the next run, right, okay. So, which question are you trying to do, Sky? And I shall. Is it the. F Let's. I tell you what. I am going to um, go. I'm going to look at the first question. And I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to walk you through sorting the first question, Sky. Yeah. So hopefully that'll help you yeah, getting your head around it. Okay, so let's, um, I'm going to go here, back to the, you're looking at the PowerPoint, so I'm going to drop to the PowerPoint. Right, I'm going to have a go at this question two, okay, um, together, because some people are still struggling, so we're going to do this one, okay. Uh, so... Right, I wish I could just, I want a new layer, but I want to clear, huh, just a bit of paper, so that's how you do it, piece of cake. Right, okay, Sky and others who are struggling, let's do this one together. Question two, right, so it's got, it's starting with 2000, what's it going to be after 10 years, and it's got half-life of five years, impossible unless you draw a ladder. So first thing you do, Sky, is you draw a ladder for this question, right? So you draw your ladder. Right, one, two, three, four, five. There's five rungs on this ladder. 
hopefully you you can you can follow that. Just draw your ladder. Next thing you do on the top rung, you put what the activity started at. So this one starts at two thousand, right? So you just write two thousand on the top rung. Now, Miss Backhouse gave a brilliant tip. If you want to work out what it's going to be on the next run down and the next run down and the next run down, you just divide the number by two, you half it. So if I did 2,000 divided by two, I hope you could see I'd get to 1,000. If I did 1,000, so I'm just dividing by two here. If I did 1,000 divided by two, what would I get? 500. If I divided 500 by two, I'd get 125. And if I divided 125 by 2, I'd get 62 and a half. Okay. So that's how you set up your ladder. You put the, the number that you get at the top, and then you just half them to, to go down. Now, how long does it take to get from 2,000 to 1,000? Well, that's the half life. How long does it take to half? So in, in our question, what does it say? Cobalt 60 has a half life of five years. So to go from 2,000 to 1,000, it takes five years. Right? So if this takes five years, to go from 1,000 to 500, half it again. How long does it take to half the half life? Another five years. Okay, so we're now down. It's gone from 2,000 to 1,000, then it's dropped out to 500. Now, how long is that all together, Scott? Five years add five years, how many years altogether? 10 years. So it's gone from 2000 down to 500 in 10 years. What's the activity after 10 years? Well, it's 500, isn't it? Look, it started, started at 2000, dropped to 1000, five years, dropped down to 500, it's 500. That's where it is. That's where we are at after 10 years, because it's two half-lifes, because each drop down the ladder is a half-life. Okay, hopefully that helps a bit, Sky. There are the extension questions. Are you looking at the PowerPoint? Yes, you are. Come on, sir, keep up. I'm looking at the chat. Oh yeah, <laughs> half 500 is not 125, miss. Thank you. <laughs> it's, this is like a, a multitasking nightmare for me, this stuff, because, yeah, I'm all the time trying to remember what you're looking at, because you're looking at something different than what I'm looking at, which is like a total head spin. But thank you, miss, it's still 150. Half 500 people is not 125. <laughs> thank you, miss. Right. Sky, I hope that helps. You can always review it when you... Um... Right, okay, Mel. So the thing to do is... Um... I'll send you an email with a, like a, another video like a diff from someone different explaining it because maybe someone else explaining it in a different way might help you out. All right, but the, the basics is, is you put the, the number at the top of the ladder, you half it each time you go down, and that takes a half life, all right? Lots of practice is the way to get your head around it, Mel. Um, so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get, right, Sky, brilliant. So we're getting there with some, uh, some stuff. Right, okay, good. Um, I'll send you an email, Mel, with like a different explanation, hopefully that helps. Right, um, okay, where we are, we've got, we've got 10 minutes left in this live lesson, right? And if we look at our objectives, it was um, understand what half-life is. It's the time it takes for half of the unstable atoms to decay. Simple, all right? If you start with 400, how long does it take? Till there's only 200 left. Yeah? 
If you start with 200, how long does it take till you've got 100 left? That's the half-life, okay? The time it takes for the sample to half, either the activity rate or the number of atoms, okay? Then it was about doing calculations. I think our second objective was how we do calculations in half-life. Tricky, but great for picking up extra points that other students around the country don't get if you can get into using those ladders, okay? Um, this is the sort of thing I can help you with as we move forward into more partial openings, I can come back to these ladders, but you'll be much more further ahead having watched this video than someone who hasn't done it, right? But again, it's just this idea that um, if, you, if, you, if you have a ladder and each rung down, you've got a half your number of atoms or half your activity, because that's what happens in, in the time between each step down on your ladder is the half-life. So if it's half-life of five minutes, if you start with a million, Five minutes later, you'd have half a million. Five minutes later after that, you'd have quarter million. Five minutes later after that, you'd have 125,000. I hope this, you've checked my maths uh, off the top of my head and there uh, that was great. Um, now, last thing is modeling radioactivity, right? And this is a little practical that you can do in your own time, but I'll spend the last 10 minutes of this live stream just going through it. So what you need, and I, I said this in the email, and this is where I've had to massively improvise. I had, 50 Haribos, sorted out up at, my, up, up at my new house where the internet isn't working, which is a real, real pain. Um, and I've come down here and the only thing I've got here is cup, is tea bags because that's all I have down here when I'm tidying it to get the deposit back. So I've got 50 tea bags, right? And I haven't even got a dice. Now, if you haven't got a dice, it doesn't matter. You can get dice apps. You can get random dice apps where you just tap it and it will give you a one, two, three, four, five, or six. Okay, so if you haven't got a dice in an old-fashioned board game like me, like Monopoly, like all the teachers will understand what I'm on about when I say a board game, um, you can just get a blooming app on your phone. I mean, what's the world come to when people haven't got a dice? Bonkers. I suppose you don't need dice on your Xbox, do you? Anyway, so I haven't got a dice. I've got a, a pencil sharpener found in the corner. So this is going to be my dice. So when I throw this, it's like throwing a dice, all right? Best I can do. So, this is how you model half life, right? Because there's a table on your worksheet about modeling half life. And so you can see I've not done any turns, so I've got 50 T bags. That's why it says 50. Uh, just here, right? Because there's 50 T bags in there, and I haven't started yet. So, what you have to do is you get two pots and all I can find in this in the old house is two mugs, right? Mr. Marvellous, I woke up like this, obviously. And uh, some orange cup with a yellow inside. So these are my two pots. So take a tea bag out. This is a this is representing an unstable nucleus. We've got 50 of them. You know when we did the thing before? When we did the thing before on the internet, we had we had 400 unstable nuclei, didn't we? The red dots and they turned blue. Well, now we've got we, we've got 50 unstable nuclei. They're just tea bags. They're not red dots. Okay. And we need to see, is this one going to decay? Now, it's a random process, isn't it? That's why we've got... That's why we've got our dice to roll. So, you get your tea bag. You roll your dice. Oh, look, it's a two. Okay, there you go, it's a two. If the dice gives you a six, that means this is decayed. Okay, that means it's given off alpha, beta, or gamma, and you put it in one of your pots. Not so much, in one of your pots. So this one, let, let's say got a, I got a six, I put it in my pot, it's decayed. Right, next one. This one, I roll my dice. got a two that's not decayed that goes into my stable pile and so it continues tea bag roll me dice got a five that's not decayed into the stable pot okay next tea bag roll the dice ah I've got a six that did decay into the decay pot so you do that for each of your 50 tea bags and you will end up with okay A big pot of tea bags that didn't decay, 
because you didn't get a six for them. And you'll get the other pot with a few tea bags in that did decay. Now, when I did this just then, right, eight of my tea bags have decayed, right? So out of 50, right, eight have decayed, because I've got six when I threw it, threw the dice. 42 are still undecayed. So in here, in here, I put 42 remaining after one go. And then, that's not what I see. Oh, come on, Brian. Then, your 42 that haven't decayed, come back in your, in your thing, right, and off you go again, all right, off you go again, uh, take your first tea bag, okay, roll the dice, I got a two, that didn't decay, roll the dice, I got a six, that did decay, you put it in the pot with the other eight that have decayed, and you do that for all of the tea bags. And again, you'll end up with a pot where still most of them haven't decayed, but now let's say six that time decayed. Okay, so now I've got six at eight in that pot, so I've got 14 in that pot, and I'm down to 36 remaining after two goes. Okay. Keep going, do that for as long as it takes to end up with all of them decayed. Might take you 40 goes, right? Which is why I'm not gonna do it for the full live stream, I'm just showing you how to do it, right? And then what you wanna do, on your graph paper, okay, you wanna plot a graph. And I'll sketch the graph now that you to show you what the axes are, and then you can look at this in your own time and produce your half-life graph of decaying tea bag sweets, bits of rice, pasta, whatever you want to do. Okay, and then you can see you can try and write down how many turns it took to half it from to get from fifty down to twenty-five. Okay, so we'll just to finish off. We've got two minutes. We will just look at the graph I want you to draw um, from the data that you get from this table here. Okay, so this is this is the um, this is the graph I want you to draw. Just to, um, right, I have to do a lot of switching around there. Okay, good. So, that's your data. So your graph's gonna be as follows. You're gonna want uh, this is gonna be number of turns. Now remember, a turn is where you roll the dice for each of the tea bags that are left that haven't decayed. So your number of turns is gonna go from naught 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, something like that, okay? And then this is, for me, this would be tea bags left. For you, it could be sweets, it could be pasta, it could be anything, anything that you count in. And you started with 50. So after no goes, you're going to be 50, okay? Then I had one go, and I dropped down to, uh, I dropped down to 42. So I'll do this dead quick. 10, 20, 30, 40. Right, so I dropped that 42, so I'd be down here after one go. After my second go, I dropped down 36. 36. So after my second go, I dropped down 36, and so on. And you should find you get this lovely half life, because we've got the random operation, because we're using our dice to say whether it decays or not and you should be able to go down to 25 go across and work out how many turns it took you and that's like the half life 
Right, phew. Um, bang on three o'clock. You lot have been brilliant. What I'll do now is I will look at the live stream for another... Can I stop the stream and still see the live feed? I'll try that. Okay, so I'm going to sign off now. Sorry there's been no drag. Um, and I, my brain's not working because I have my hat on. But that is our life essentially. Thank you for watching. Um, and yeah, I'll see some more of you next week. Um, yeah, rewatch it. Email me with any problems. You can email um, your other your other science teachers. Any any feedback? Anything to make these things better? Um, you know, because really, I just I'm doing these so you get some proper teaching, proper quality teaching. Hopefully, um, like as much as we can, close as we can get it to to be in in the classroom. All right. So anything, any improvements? Let me know. You all know me. Right, okay, um, I'll keep an eye on the, I'll stop the stream, I'll keep an eye on the live chat for another three or four minutes, and then I shall uh, shut that down as well.